Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Key Fanjin Network. It is episode 727. That is right, 727. I'm here as a good friend of mine, Bay Ragmi. And I just want to say thank you for being a guest on the show, not once, not twice. This is ever the third or fourth time that you put up with me. It's a real honor <laughs> having you back on. Thank you, Keith. I'm honored. Holy cow, 700, over, so what was it, 720 episodes you've done? Uh, 727. Holy cow. That is amazing. Hats off to you. Congrats, man. That's amazing. Oh, absolutely. As I said to Scotty and Joel, and I want to say to you, this is what I want to do to the day I die. I'm very passionate about it. I found something that makes me happy. Make new friends out of it. Hang out with a couple good friends. Make new friends. And and I said earlier, you know, I feel, in a way, I got my birthday list. So I don't know if I ever told you about that. No. When I turned 21... And I know it's a new format of 25 minutes, a half hour maximum. So I will sum up the story real fast. This is about you, not me. Uh, but when I turned 21, people said to me, what, you live only once in your life. So do something special. Well, I don't really drink. You know, I speak, drink on special occasions. That doesn't really count. But I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. If I have to die, I would like to have a couple famous friends. Hmm. Of course, at the time, you know, it's I keep it PG, but I was told to go blank myself. I was told to blank off. I'm a low life, a parasite. We don't deal with people like you. And I was like, okay, well, how can I get my birthday wish, but make it as in it looks more presentable and more professional? Well, I do have a disability. Why not create a talk show using my disability instead of using a crutch or like I've been saying, oh, poor me, I have a disability. Why not use a weakness and turn it into a strength? Absolutely. For seven and a half years, that's what I've been doing. You know, Scotty and uh, Joel will say, why do you have permission forms? Long story short, I did 72 phone interviews because I wanted to work as Blog Talk Radio. Mm -hmm. And I was still having panic attacks. You know, I just ridiculous. I'm in a room by myself talking on the damn phone. I hate talking on the phone because it feels like I'm talking to myself. But, But I did 72 and I said, you know what? Do it over. I got up to 300. So remember, 72, 300, 372 episodes. No permission form. Mm-hmm. Little by little, people would say to me, yeah, you know, my agent said that you ask a lot of stupid questions. We really don't like the video quality. We don't want to deal with people like you. Yeah, I, I thought I would get more sympathy for working with someone like you. Instead, wow. I'm getting death threats. I'm getting this. I'm getting that. Take it down. We're going to sue you. And I'm like, you know what? And, of course, my brother said to me, you know, you're not a legit talk show. So I said, you know what? Hell with it. I woke up a lawyer online. Funny enough, he was a guest on my talk show. Mm. Um, I, he's like, this is the three things you need to understand. You do not have to be trademarked because that's $2,000. You're not making any money, so don't worry about that. Well, eventually, once you start making money, you should definitely cop you know, a trademark. Yeah. So no one can take it. Right now, I'm paying for name. You know, no one can take it. Mm-hmm. Um, copyrighted. You, you know, you really don't have to do it because you have an online presence. Because I'm all over the place: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. People know who you are. Mm-hmm. Your biggest mistake was you should have had permission forms. Write up a form explaining what you're doing and do you have permission to use that episode. Scotty, you know, I, I love him. He's a great guy. And Joel, too. Did, they just didn't understand why I had a permission form. And I, I, I said to you, I took people, my grandfather 
even though it is a different time, my grandfather said, if I give you my word, my word is my bond. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I'm going to do that. I will take you at your word. And little by little, people were making idle threats to me. And I said, you know what? Screw it. I took all 370 of them down. Did the show over. I remember that. I remember you had some problems a few years ago. And I mean, I, I, I've done, you know, dozens of, uh, of, of these interviews. And you're, you're the first person I've had a permission slip for. Yeah. No, absolutely. I do apologize if it's freezing on your end. No, it's, it's good. And um, so, you know, I do have no permits and forms. And it's pretty much, you know, it looks legit. It's up front. I tell you my, what I'm doing. And it's, you know, fine. You know, a lot of people, you know, they want to sign it. Okay. Other people, if I really want you on the show, like Kansas Michelle, I made an inception for her. I said, you, know, you don't have to sign the permission form. I want you on the show. Jet Jarrett, I'm trying to get him on for a second time. Didn't want to sign a permission form, but said he would do a phone interview. Mm -hmm. So if I really like you, I will work the other way. But normally, okay. I don't interview people unless they sign permission forms. Gotcha. But for, you know, that was my story. Mm -hmm. Now, for people who want to know who you are, they can go and look at season one, episode 84, and you can see the video quality while I'm talking about. It wasn't like this because, you know, I did things ass backwards. So, you know, episode season one, 84, then we did a second one, June 13th of 2017. Wow. I believe there might be a third one in there. I couldn't really find it. So this could either be the third or fourth. You know, this doesn't make it really a difference. But the first thing I want to ask you is how you been. It's really great to see you again. You too. Yeah, I, I, I've been really good, man. But uh, I uh, relocated. I uh, was originally from the Philadelphia area. And um, a year ago, I relocated to Nashville. Um, went through uh, <laughs> a lot of changes in my life personally. I uh, went through a divorce. And now I'm with uh, a new new love in my life. And uh my life has definitely um, gotten better. I will say that. I, I've gotten better personally, and my life has gotten better. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I have finally, um, you know, some, something. It's funny. In one of these interviews I was doing um, about a year and a half ago, uh, I was asked the question, what do you want to uh, accomplish in your life now? You've, you've played in bands. You've, you've done, you know, musical sh uh, bands. You've played you know, a lot of the clubs in the Philadelphia area, you were a professional wrestler, you wrestled all around, you, you were on television, you were in magazines, um, you know, you, you've done your, your podcast, you've interviewed, you know, hundreds and hundreds of celebrities. Um, what is next for you? What do you want to do in your life? And it really hit me. And I was like, you know, I, I have done a lot in the entertainment business, but personally, like I want happiness. Like I was never truly happy. I, I went through a lot of loss in my life, losing both my parents at a very young age. And that really had an effect on me through the years. And, um, you know, trying to find happiness in, um, entertainment, doing things entertainment wise or, um, uh, you know, uh, relationships that were just not, just being in relationships to be in them and uh, a marriage that just was not good. And uh, it hit me like, I want to be happy. I want to finally be happy. And um, I made a lot of changes in my life at 49 years of age. I, I it was, you know, uh, um, more than halfway through life. So I thought it was, it was time to really um, find happiness. And I have, and I, I found it in a, uh, you know, here in Nashville and I found it in my new partner and she's amazing and I've been truly blessed. And finally, I, I am, can honestly finally admit I'm happy. And a lot of people say they see it in my face now. You can see, I mean, the last time I talked to you, I, I've lost 120 pounds from the last time I've talked to you. Like, like my life has truly gotten better. No, I'm really happy for you. And, you know, hey, you lost the weight and unfortunately I have a fat neck. So I think I found it. <laughs> 
Come on now. You're looking good, Keith. I appreciate that. And if you're interested, uh, maybe we can do like a special episode where you can interview me on the talk show. Sure. And also, the biggest question I want to ask you is that I've been trying to figure out for myself. When you started your career, mm-hmm. sorry, I just had a nudge. <laughs> when you started your career, how, what was the very first step that you had to accomplish? And after completed everything from having your own station, from working in ECW, you are a big star. Do you, how do you feel in, or along the way to someone tell you, it was like, hey, maybe you should do like an autograph signing. Like when from you first started, uh, what was the very first step in along the way? How do you feel like, you know what, this is the right time to start branching out, doing meet and greets and autograph signings? Um, well, well. Clear, clarify the first part of that question. What, what do you mean the first step? Well, did someone say, you know what, you should talk to this person if you, sh- you should join this organization? Oh, oh you mean when I uh, got into the wrestling business? Well, in general, into this whole entertainment career. Um, well, I, I mean, it was, it was 30 years ago when I got involved in the wrestling business. It was, it, actually, it's coming up as... Next week, it's scary. It's actually um, next week will be 30 years from when I started wrestling school. It'll be my, my 30 year anniversary, which is kind of scary. Um, but, you know, I, I got in the wrestling business at 20 years old, and, um, you know, I, I had no idea what to expect getting into the business. I, I, you know, from what I was told, you know, things can be, can come to you kind of easy in the wrestling business at that time. And, um, you know, they, they don't, they don't come easy to you in, in any business. You got to really, um, you know, you got to work hard. And so I put in a lot of <clears throat> time and effort to get to where I got. And I still didn't get that far in the wrestling business. Believe me. Um, you know, you talk to, you've talked to many other people, uh, you know, like Raven and Joel Gertner and Jeff Jarrett, you were saying, uh, guys who really truly went a lot further than I did. Um, you know, so, you know, once you're getting involved with wrestling or, or any type of entertainment business, whether a music business or, you know, podcasting or whatever, um, the, the first thing is truly um, making connections, uh, I feel. Uh, making good connections, maintaining connections and relationships um, it, it is truly huge. Like, I, like, like you've done, like, you know, we connected – I guess four or five years ago, we've, you know, we keep in touch from here to here and that's, you, you know, you maintain those relationships and connections. And, um, you know, that's what I've done through the years, whether it was wrestling or, you know, with uh, doing my podcast now, Total Gym Radio, uh, it's going on, it's about eight years now. So, yeah, I mean, I, mean, uh, I think the number one thing is really uh, those connections, maintaining those relationships for sure. No, oh, absolutely. Now, when you go out to the next step, we you know, do people recognize you right away? And have you ever thought about doing autograph signings? Um, people don't recognize me anymore. Uh, when, they, when they think of me in ECW and, and being the character of Chubby Dudley, um, I'm a lot different looking now. I, I mean, I used to have hair almost down to my, my ass. And... Uh, um, you know, and I was a hundred and something pounds heavier. So I, I do look completely different. Um, and I didn't have gray hair. <laughs> um, so, so that part is different. So people don't recognize me anymore for that. Um, but in the day, in, in the days of ECW, when I was in ECW, I used to get recognized all the time. I, I mean, I would be, you know, if I was in a mall or uh, I, at the time I was delivering pizzas I would deliver pizzas during the weekend on the weekends do ECW and I'd be delivering pizzas to, pe- to people's houses and kids would be like, there would be times they'd be watching ECW and I'm at the door with a pizza and they're like doing a double take, like what the hell? Like, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean back then, yeah, I, I would, or be at a restaurants or bars hanging out. I would get recognized all the time and ask for autographs and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, so back then, yeah, now, no, nah, people don't recognize me anymore. Um, but doing audit, I've done many, uh, wrestling conventions over the years and autograph signings. Yes, I have done them. Yeah. Well, if you're interested, maybe we can do one together. Yeah. I, I mean, the last one I did was, um, last year I did one in Rhode Island last year. Uh, la, 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 la. it was June of 2019. It was a lot of fun. It was a, a blast for the, the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame Museum. They, they were the, the ones that brought me in. Amazing people. Uh, Dino Angel and his uh, wife, Missy Misdemeanor, they were the ones that brought me up to Rhode Island. It was, it was an amazing time and experience. No, I bet. I want your honest opinion. Do you think with everything that I accomplished, do you think I'm good enough already to do autograph signings, or do you think it's too soon? I want you to be brutally honest. It's probably too soon. It's probably too soon. But let's put it this, this way. All right, so you've done, you know, 700-plus interviews. Um, do people stop you? No. When you're – no. Say. <laughs> Say. I mean, there are some times, you know, when I worked at Walmart, people would say – you know, oh, I, you look familiar, or you look like someone I used to know, or if I tell them I have a talk show, they will come back a couple of weeks later, oh, hey, I saw that episode that you were talking about, or your work, but not anyone has come over to me and said, you know, I, um, I happen to see you, and now it's great to see you, but how do you, for people who want to get to that point, like, what type of exposure do you need to get? You need a lot, a lot of exposure. You, you got you to gotta figure it this way. Um, you know, there's probably 8 million of these shows yeah. on the internet right now. So you got to find out what's going to stand you apart from the rest, which you have something that does. You have a disability that stands you apart from the rest, which – kind of you know it puts you at a disadvantage but yet an advantage because you have something that people wouldn't expect you to be doing this and you do a good job of it so that's the 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 plus of, of your your disability you have a disability but you're 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 working through it you're fighting through it and you're shining through it so you have that going for you but do you have do you have millions of people watching your show no no Neither do I. Do you have do you have companies contacting you to want to sponsor your show? No, no. I have reached so, out. I, so I mean, it's it's things like that. It's when people are starting to knock on your door to want to, you know, have you do things and have you, um, they want to pay you stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, where where would you want to do a autograph signing? Like for me, it's um, I have the wrestling thing. So if there's a wrestling convention, I can get asked to go do it. But right. I'm not going to just get asked to come sign autographs anywhere. It, it wouldn't make sense. And even tr and trust me, when I do these wrestling things, you know, I could have I could have Raven or Joel Gertner right next to me. People are going to go pay for their autograph way before they're going to pay for mine. Yes. You know, so if a hundred people come through, I might get five people that want mine. They'll get 95 that want theirs. No, I agree. You know, for an example, I didn't know you were in Tennessee. I went to me, let's go say, you know, Hudson Valley Comic Con, you know, in, in the Hudson Valley area. Um, I actually wanted to reach out to, um, Ah, oh, crap. Now, now I have a brain fart. Um, the big event, you know, at LaGuardia. And I'm thinking, yes, this would be great for me. But the, as you just said, no one knows who the hell you are. And that's the biggest hurdle that, you, that I need to get over is how do I get over that hurdle? You know, I'm on, I well, here's a, something you should do is see these events you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I've done this. I've at times I've paid and got a table at 
local when I was in the Philadelphia area at local conventions. And I, I paid at tables at wrestling conventions or comic book conventions and I got tables and I set up with information about totally Jim radio. And I met and greeted people and gave business cards or flyers about my show and talked to them about it and, you know, had information. So, I mean, that's a way to get out there and spread the news of your show and about you and things like that. And even get pictures made up and give out pictures, you know, give them out. Let, 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 you know, draw attention to you, promote yourself. No, I do. You know, let's Facebook, my fan page, it's over 1,000, I think 500 something. Nice. Uh, Instagram's over 1,000. Nice. Twitter is over a thousand. Nice. YouTube, don't get me started on YouTube. I uh, it's really hard as that. I actually did come up with. Uh, I think I asked you too if you would be interested in buying a coffee mug, a travel mug. I made out shirts. Uh, I sold. I bought twenty. I got like ten dollars each. Okay. Um, nice. But it was a start. Mm-hmm. But there's other people. You know, I actually. You know, if you're interested, I would love to work with you. You know, I um, think it was a big event I talked to about having a table. Okay. And like, how much is a table? And I'm like, oh, it's $400. I'm like, okay, 400 for Friday and Saturday. No, $400 for a day. And I'm like, mm-hmm. all right, well, if I can get you, know, you or Raven or Joe Gertner go half, you know, I pay two, you pay two. But the thing is, yes, you can put yourself out there, but the thing is, no one knows who you are. Right. And I've been thinking, you know, I have interviewed so many people, but I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I'm, I feel like I connect with someone, and then it's just as fast as it comes, it's as fast as it's taken away. Hmm. But at, you know, um, Manhattan neighborhood of broadcasting. Uh, funny enough, I'm actually on their list now. They said, oh, now you can actually start uploading your episodes. So people in Manhattan, it's public broadcasting, can see your shows. Of course, I have to do some editing and knock it down to about 28 minutes. Uh, okay. I interviewed a guy from Long Island, um, JBC. He said, oh, we might be interested in having – airing some of your shows on the radio, have to knock it down to 22 minutes. Hint why I'm starting to do the new format of 25, 26 minutes. Right. Try to be in between. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been reaching out to people left and right. Um, hey, cross-promoting was a good uh, possibility. If you're up Cro- cross-promotion is, is definitely a, a huge thing that, um, you know, I've, I've talked with other people who do, who do podcasts and, Cross promotion is is a huge thing that that people need to do more of. Absolutely. Well, we can definitely talk about that off the air. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for an example, if you give me a banner, I can definitely do one for you. You can do one for me, and I. And that's another thing. I have people doing fan made recommendations where they come out and explain why do they like Keith Andrew? Why do you support the Keith Andrew Network? So I already have that, and it's working kind of. I know I talk with my hands, you know, as far as I have it, but it it comes and it goes. And you're the expert. You, I know there's only a year difference, but like I said, you've been at ECW, and you've been on national television, so people know who you are. So that's a big, you know, accomplishment for you. And my hat's off to you. I'm not kissing your ass or anything, but – being on national TV, that is a big hurdle. And once you get over that, you know, people can say, okay, what else can you do besides being a wrestler? See, that's the thing, too, that um, I've come to really learn over the years about the entertainment businesses. And it's funny, I, I was watching um, the new Ozzy Osbourne documentary last night that was on the A&E Network. And they even said it in there. And you know, here, I'll, I'll use Ozzy for an example. Here, Ozzy uh, had a huge, you know, 30, 35-year um, amazing musical career and sold millions and millions of albums, many awards, uh, was on MTV, you know, for years. 
But when he got when the, their reality show happened and the reality show took off, it shows you the whole level of an importance of television in the entertainment industry. When you're on an actual TV network, it elevates you beyond belief. So you can be music, uh, you know, internet, it doesn't matter. Unless you're on television, that's yeah. where you really excel and that's where you become that person that, that is now known. People will now recognize you. And if you get onto a TV show, I always say this too, if you get on a TV show, you, you're, you've kind of got it made in the future. If that show, if that show succeeds, you're even better off. But even if you get a, a few years out of it, because you can probably end up doing some type of comic convention circuit afterwards, doing autographs and, and make a decent living as well. So television is beyond the most important thing in the entertainment industry. No, absolutely. Maybe not have met had a neighborhood of broadcasting it might be a opportunity. Actually, I do want to talk to you about that off the air. Okay. Uh, about wrapping up our interview segment, how can people follow you on social media? You know, I know you're like me. You're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but they want to hear from you, not me. All right. So I got, I got tons of stuff going on. So I have – you can look for me just right there. You see it. My name is Bay Ragney. Um, you can look for me on Facebook. Um, I, I also I run Totally Driven Entertainment, so you can look for us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and YouTube. Um, totally Driven Entertainment, Totally Driven Radio. I also, me and my uh, my girlfriend uh, Coco, we we do a uh, we started this whole comedy thing we're doing uh, called Coco Bay, and you can look for us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. Look up Coco Bay Winning. We do a lot of little funny videos, cute videos. And goofy videos and food reviews too we're doing. So look up Coco Bay winning as well. So Bay Ragney, Chubby Dudley, Totally Driven Entertainment, and Coco Bay winning. Look us all up. Like us, love us, follow us. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and, and TikTok. We're on TikTok too. Coco Bay winning. <laughs> no, absolutely. And now the last question, I want you to be completely brutally honest. When I approached you once again to be on the show, what was your honest first reaction and what made you say yes? Um, honestly, I always, I always enjoy doing interviews. Um, <laughs> I enjoy, especially when it's somebody who I've done interview shows with before, like yourself. And it's ones that I've had good experiences with. Like I, I, everyone I've done with you, I've had a good time, good conversation, and it, you're always a pleasure to deal with. I've had some that have been, um, nice people to deal with, but just the interviews are just brutal. And, uh, I've always had great experiences with you, Keith, and I'm proud to call you a friend and I'm, I'm very proud of everything you do. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And what would you say for people that first watched the show? You know, it doesn't matter if it's fall wrestlers, um, new people that see the show, you know, what would your word of recommendation be? Hang out and give Keith a chance. No, absolutely. That's all I ask. Now, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Okay. Wrapping up our interview segment, it was a real honor and privilege catching up with you, and I'm looking forward uh, to another one down the road. Absolutely. Thank you, Keith, so much. Mimi Chen. Hi, my name is Ella Dorsch. I'm Shauna Toff. Hey, guys. I'm Anastasia Edwards. Hi, this is Jackie Nunez. Actress Becky Hayes. Hi, I'm Amelia Rose. Hey there, I'm Saki Miera. Hey, guys. I'm Alexandria Denise, and you're watching Keith Andrews' show. He's 